In this video, we're going to explore Gitra's function ID functionality. Function ID allows you to identify library functions within the code. To this end, I'm going to try to use function ID to recognize functions from the DACO2 samples. Previously, I wrote a Yara signature that recognizes the XOR decode function that is used in different samples of DACO2. So I assume that this is some sort of library function. I will now use Gitras function ID so that when I load any of these samples and run the function ID analysis, it will mark this function as X or decoder. So here we have the function. And the reason why I think that this is a library function is because they first check whether the input parameter is a null pointer and then set the output to an empty string. And usually if you have throwaway code, code that you only use once, you wouldn't have this check here because you know how this function is called. So let's see how function ID works. For this, you can hit F1 while you hover over function ID, pops up the help. And when you read this, you find out that it uses basic hashing and some other metrics to find function matches. It's basically very similar to hex ray, IDAS flirt signatures. So let's get started with this. First, we create a new empty function ID database. I will generate it in the samples folder that I'm currently using for this project. Let's call this Dakulu. Then we attach this database. And see whether it's active. Okay, it's active. And next, we populate a function ID database from programs. So here I select our function database that I just created. Obviously, I made a mistake creating this here. Then you can give this library a name. I'm going to name it Daku. Obviously, you can name it like equation group or Stuxnet or whatever internal name you have. And then library version two and variant, I will just leave empty. Then select the root folder. Select language. And actually we have to select a library variant. So I will just name this one and we don't have to se select a common symbols file. So we hit okay. And these are now all the functions that are included in this function ID database. And as you noticed, that functions starting with the fun underscore prefix are not included in this. And now to debug this, we actually have to enable an experimental plugin and that is the function ID debug plugin. We enable this, hit OK. And obviously, if you haven't already done so, you also have to enable the function ID plugin, but it usually is enabled by default. Now we can open the table viewer and here we can then see all the hashes of the different functions. And now I will load a different sample that is recognized by my Yara signature. That means it contains the function that we analyzed. Let's choose this one and then have it analyze. Make sure we have function ID enabled and we analyze this. Now we see that in the sample, it automatically marks this matched function. So if we now have analyzed a lot of malware samples and run function ID over all the malware samples, we can then have this automatically determine where functions are reused. And it annotates here that this is a single match, the name of the function and the library that it uses.